What I'm going to tell you today, uh, in, a, in a very brief, I'm going to cut my presentation down so we can enjoy discussion and enjoy some food, is about this journey of a connected enterprise. So you heard today a lot about um, the possibilities. You heard a lot today about um, uh, the capabilities of, of the regional manufacturing centers. I want, to I want to show you an example of this stuff in action. So we've been in business for 150 years making food people love. At the same time in that, in that pitch, I don't know if you saw energy being consumed or used there. We started off as a milling company, and I'm telling you a, a milling story, actually. I'll skip over this. We're an $18 million company. $18 million company just means we're big. The story I really want to tell you is about connecting, but more importantly, I want to tell you a story about meeting people where they're at. And so as we think about smart manufacturing, it's not about, um, hey, start over, wipe out all your assets, and then, then we can talk about smart manufacturing. At General Mills, um, we're a company that is small, medium, and large all at the same time. We're a company that has internal, contract, internal manufacturing as well as contract manufacturing. We're an ecosystem that looks like the supply chain all inside of our own house as well, and, and a lot of big companies are like that. And so as you think about how you get smart, uh, you have to meet people where they're at and then move that forward. So smart might just mean, in many cases, smarter. It doesn't necessarily smartest. It might just mean smarter because that's where money, money happens. So just like Jim Davis said, you know, do you build the car? Do you wait 10 years to build the car and have no transportation? Or do you start small, like with a bicycle, and then move, move, move on your way up? So I'm going to tell you a story about meeting where they're at. And in this process of meeting where they're at, I'm going to tell you a story about how we drove extraordinary value, unlocking productivity, et cetera. So first of all, how many people in this room believe energy is an ingredient to manufacturing? How many believe it's an outcome of manufacturing? At General Mills, the big shift we made was we treated energy as an ingredient. When you think of energy as an ingredient, you have to think about loss and waste. First of all, you have to measure it so you know where it's going. When you start thinking that way, one of the things you, you, you quickly think of is that, you know, probably the biggest opportunity, at least for a food company, uh, and we're one of the heavy users, and you saw in every, everyone's regional slide, <coughs> food, food processing is in the top five. It's less about making a dryer more efficient. It's less about making a boiler more efficient. It's more about making your quality right. It's more about eliminating your waste. If I have a process stream that has 20% waste in it, and I figure out how to optimize my process, and that, that process consumes a lot of energy, what benefits do I get if I eliminate waste? It's twofold. I not only have more productivity, but if energy, if you consider and measure energy as an ingredient, I didn't use it. And I'm gonna tell you a story about how we're not using energy. At the beginning, we make food, we sell trust, we have, a, we have a story to tell you about how we have to do this in the, in the food network, especially being a big food company. And the story goes like this, it's about connecting across boundaries and it's, in, and it's about taking grain and turning it into Cheerios. And in the new Cheerios that we, we launched just uh, about a year ago is it's gluten free. And those of you who know anything about food science would probably say, that's a marketing ploy. Oats don't have gluten in them. And now you have a label that says gluten-free. Ah, that is true. Oats do not have gluten in them. 
but the food stream does. The farms, the farms do. And, and to make gluten-free claims, we have to get down to parts per million in a reduction of those foreign materials like wheat and like barley. So I'm telling you a little story about the flow of oats. Can anyone pick out the oat? The barley? The rice? We have to do this every day and sort this stuff out with millions and millions and millions of pounds. So what we did was we took a, a solution approach um, under the SMLC banner. And if you look on the far right-hand side, this, this rings to what Jim Davis just said. Sources, or what are your data sources? Contextualization, and then applications that we had to build. And the, and the big two items that, that really had to get um, redone here was this concept of, con that is brand new here, I should say, is contextualization and applications. And we did this as a, a, a trifecta of General Mills, uh, Think IQ, um, Doug and Niels are here from Think IQ right in the front, and then uh, Savagent and Mark Besser is over on that table. So you can feel free to talk to any of those guys about, about the technology behind all this. But we had to figure out a way to connect people, chalkboards, um, bins, sensors, uh, receiving information, uh, typically SAP kinds of information, rail car systems uh, in transportation knowledge, put it into a data model that didn't exist, contextualize it because all the, all the different sources you have have different time dimensions, and then do something with it. So what are we trying to do? We're trying to manage those bins so we don't have blacks and reds. We're trying to get genealogy so we can ensure from field to fork that the that the consumer is getting pure product right all the time. We have a concept in the food industry called positive release, and that is you cannot release your product to the next channel down until everything about what you make is right. So if you're not sure your stuff is right, you hold on to a lot of inventory. When you hold on to inventory, you spend money. So the only way to, to, to move the flow of ingredients from ingredients to finished product to the consumer is to do it right the first time and to do it fast. Otherwise, you're going to be bound up in inventory. And then we had to do basic grading and sizing. And I was sharing this a little bit with Craig uh, earlier this morning. And you look at this, and this is an oil and gas problem. Oh, no, wait a minute. This is a mining problem. Oh, wait a minute. This is another grain problem. It's, <laughs> this, this concept of managing flow, of understanding waste, of understanding the, the information that, that is going through the transformation process, the energy that's consumed and wasted in that process is universal to manufacturing. Anyone that makes stuff does stuff like this, because hardly anybody takes the raw material and that is, the, uh, uh, that is the end product. Some transformation has to happen. At the end of the day, we end up with improved safety, we have demand-driven supply chains. This little example that I went through, we're gonna save about $20 million in ingredients, we're gonna save about a million dollars in energy. So we're gonna blow one year, six months. So we're going to blow our numbers out of the water when we talk about the goal of 10 or 15 or 20 percent energy savings by doing the right thing for productivity. And, and that's the cool part. It's kind of like the sustainability story. Do you want to do sustainability for sustainability or do you want to do it for good business? Because they actually go hand in hand. So this is why it's an easy sell, sell in my supply chain network to talk about smart manufacturing driving productivity because I get multiple levers that are beneficial. I get, I get an energy lever. I get a productivity and a cost per case lever. I get an improved safety record. I get an improved quality record. I mean, it's, it's like telling the story of continuous improvement. It's multiple levers, multiple facets. That's why this stuff is so important. And, and the thing that makes this tick, and in this particular example, the, the new technology, the new approach that, that kind of freed us up was not about connecting data sources. That's, that's now common technology. A lot of people can do that. What freed it up for us was what Think IQ is doing with their data modeling capability and using semantic technology, connecting with what Savagin's doing with workflow as a service. And it's all these elements that Jim Davis talked about around the, plat the topic of a platform and plugging in these core capabilities that allows us to do the kinds of things that we're doing. So I'd encourage you to think about your systems from small to large, 
from very, very narrow, because you, you have to do the blocking and tackling on your equipment. We just happen to be in a different place. We're doing it at the enterprise level and ecosystem. Not every, you know, you have to meet people where they're at. If you're not, if you're not General Mills, you're gonna meet them in a different place. That's the cool part about what we're trying to do in smart manufacturing. So I thank you for that.